Corner Fish Heads. Back on another Waterbox Live Wednesday Welcome. afternoon. Yes, indeed. We appreciate you all being here. You can follow me and Jess on Instagram. You can also follow the official Instagram at Waterbox Aquariums. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we are giving away, mixing up a little bit. We've got two $25 Waterbox gift cards to give away today. Yes. So, the yes. currency, as always, be active in the comments, ask questions, make friends, mm -hmm. just keep it, you know, keep active both Facebook and YouTube, and we will be taking questions and all that throughout the show, so drop them on in there. Yeah, and as always, guys, smash that like button for it. It helps us out tremendously. If you're on Facebook, share the stream. Share it to any aquarium groups you're in, things yep. like that. Share it to your page. Helps us out a lot. And of course, like we said, engage with us. That's why we're here live. If we're here live so we can answer your questions, yes. we can talk water box, we can talk aquariums, um, and we're talking about flow today. We are. So we're talking about flow. I think it's one of those overlooked um, keys of an aquarium that sure. is so, so important. We're going to talk about why it's important and different types of flow. Um, but I think we also want to mention about a sale going on. Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. So if you guys don't know, we are running a spring sale event. So across all of our markets, we're running a 10% off select models up until uh, May 31st. If you're in the market for a water box, now is the time to get it. It's a pretty big deal. Yes. So it's while supplies last. So if a model runs out, sorry. Yep. Better luck next time. So jump so. on over to the website. You'll see all the um, yeah. models that are included. Go ahead and get on that. You said all markets, right? Yep. All right. Awesome. So, um, so talking about flow, uh, and we, I think some of you guys asked about it last week that we didn't have power heads in the Infinia yet. So um, we actually have now added the power heads to go along with our flow conversation. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because that's just, it's an important part. A lot of people think lighting and water chemistry are the main things that, you know, happen for coral health. But flow is going to be a big, big part huge, of it. Huge, huge. Yeah. Picking the right flow and the reasons kind of why it is so important is what we're going to kind of talk about today. So if you want to show the Infinia, got new power heads running on it. So we got two MP40s sitting on there. Um, installed these the other day when I turned them on. Lots of gunk and stuff that has settled because there mm -hmm. hasn't been flow in there. Kicked up. Water's nice and clear. Um, and what I did is I've put them both mostly. Um, towards the center on each side. But because of the rockscape, and there is no perfect placement for power heads. I can't tell someone this is exactly where you need to place your power heads, because yep. it depends on your rock. So because the rock kind of does this like S-type shape, mm -hmm. I have one that's off-center towards the back a little bit, one that's off-center towards the front center, and all up a little bit higher, because I'm going to have high flow corals on mm -hmm. that top half of the rock. Yeah. So I want that movement up there. And it's still enough with those MP40s and the great flow that they have that the sand bed's going to stay clean. But you'll see I kind of have a running the raceway almost of right. the rockscape. So um, a lot of people say, like, how should I place my power heads? So many variables on that based upon your rock work. And you can always move them around when you kind of have them running yeah. for a few days. And say, oh, this coral doesn't like it or the sand's kind of getting gunky in this area. Um, and just play around with it. So I go off my best judgment when I put them on see how it does for the next week and kind of make any adjustments as needed. Yeah. But and as your tank matures too, you can always, like you said, you can add more um, and, you know, just fix any of those dead spots you might have as the corals grow in, et cetera. I've seen mm -hmm. some aquariums that have like six MP40s on them. Now they're going like full SPS crazy. Yeah, but, yeah. as um, you do when those colonies get huge, you do yeah. find that you're going to probably have to add additional power heads. Yeah. Um, but like for the size tank, two of them, Perfectly good start. I can always yeah. add. Um, most of my tanks, unless they just have SPS, generally have stuff with two. So if you get good ones. Now, if you're getting kind yeah. of just more basic, you might have to add more to it. So. Um, good questions coming in here. Again, I want to encourage you guys to post questions in the comments if you can and engage with us because we are giving away two $25 gift cards here at the end of the stream. you got to stick around for that. Pair that along with a tank on sale. Yep, there you Winning go. Winning right there. Um, you can replace your filter socks. You can get them for free. <laughs> So that's true. Good deal. Awesome. Um, so the Vinia has its flow, but kind of like why is flow so important? And what like what does it serve inside the aquarium? A lot of things aren't as obvious as just I need movement in mm -hmm. there. Um, and one of the number one things is, is that all coral have like a mucus layer. Um, and this helps protect them. It helps them kind of clean themselves off. Now, if you don't have enough flow, that layer gets thicker and it's, they aren't able to remove it. So you get detritus and stuff building up on it. Mm -hmm. This almost kind of covers them. They can't open their polyps all the way. 
going to restrict their feeding. They're not absorbing light as well. Um, so they, their function is they need to be able to kind of continuously stay clean of detritus and debris yeah. and things like that for them to respirate um, and do all of that. So not enough flow. They're not getting that kind of off of them and it can actually suffocate them. So definitely don't want that. And you see that with leathers a lot of the time. And I've talked about this in a lot of shows is that your leather kind of closes up, looks a little bit shiny almost. Yeah. Um, and you basically have to now slough off that like layer mm -hmm. and let them release their polyps again because they're not able to um, clean themselves properly. Right. So usually if a leather's in too low a flow or something like that. Yeah. One of the things you have to, that I tell people they need to think about it in regards to flow is think about how turbulent the ocean is. Like, so where these corals are, mm -hmm. so some of them, there's like waves crashing over the top of them or there's yep. just a tremendous amount of water pushing by them every day. So if you stick them in a stagnant aquarium, they're going to die. Yep. Absolutely. So, we've got a question on here. Richard Wise is asking, are the magnets on the MP40 strong enough for use on three quarter inch glass? I think they are. You'd have to check the chart. I believe so. Them. I think it's three quarter is fine for I those. I mean, yeah, because it's 19 millimeter, which is three yep. quarter. So, you have, well, those are MP60s there. So, MP60 is on the seven foot purely because of the length of it and stuff that I wanted to go with the yeah. 60s. But they're the 40s that I put on the Infinia. So, yeah. Yeah, you should be good with those, I believe. Yep. So we got that part of it. Um, and then to kind of go along with the idea of dirt and things settling is if the detritus is just settling into the rock and onto the sand and you don't have enough flow, um, you know, it's just going to stay there and break down, which equals nitrates and phosphates yeah. and it's going to elevate everything in your tank. Um, that leads to water quality issues, algae buildup, all of that. By having the power heads and having good ones and properly spaced and placed is you're going to keep that suspended into the water column. Yeah. And that's going to allow it to go down the overflow or into your filtration chambers and be removed by your filter socks or whatever you use. Yeah. And that water is then going to pass by the protein skimmer and, you know, having the proper filtration. So, you know, like when I said, this tank's not been set up for that long and there's not much in it. But when I turn those power heads on, a whole bunch of stuff got kicked up from the sand and in the rocks that's actually had that chance to settle in even this short amount of time. So you think long term, the amount of stuff yeah. that just kind of settles and promotes algae and bad water quality can be quite drastic. That's when you really see how well the power heads actually work is if you're not running them for a long time, you know, like, you, like on the new tank. Uh -huh. And when you talk about bringing like the detritus down to the sump for like the filtration, when you turn them on, it's, you can actually see, it's almost like the water column lifts up. Yeah. Like it lifts up everything from the bottom takes it through, through the uh, overflow system, down to the skimmer, down to the filter socks. And that's Remember, the, dirt's uh, not removed, it breaks down the waste. Yeah. You know? Cool. There you go. George is asking, thoughts on putting power heads on the back wall of the tank? I think a lot of it depends on size of the tank and how powerful the power heads are. Yeah. Um, now, you would not necessarily want to take an MP60 on the back wall and blast it straight at the front glass. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if long term it's technically an issue, but I feel like that's just a lot of push and pressure yeah. in a shorter distance. You're going to achieve a lot better by going the long distance in a tank. Yeah. Um, you can use smaller power heads towards the back. A lot of times people do it to get under rock area. That's just like you can't get with power heads. Um, but I wouldn't go chucking an MP60 shooting a glass 24 inches in front of it at full speed. Yeah, Luke did ask a question that I think we should touch on because it kind of goes along with that topic. If you have a peninsula tank, mm -hmm. he wants he's he's looking for like detail on how to manage flow within that tank because it's kind of similar, right? You have to put the power heads on the back of the tank, but the back of the tank is on the length side, right? So I don't know if Keenan, you can show it, but we do have a peninsula, and we're actually using Luke. We're using a power head on both sides, right? You have Just one on one the, side. Oh, just oh, just the one side. So he's asking, how do you manage it with it just being on one side? Um, you have the return lines. Yeah. So the return lines I use basically, um, and this is our four foot peninsula, the ORA build, and the return lines I have them pointing out to go down the long length along the glass um, yeah. side, and then we've got MP40 on the middle, kind of shooting against the rock. Yeah. and covering the middle part and taking it up to the overflow. So with those two methods, you're creating basically kind of like that gyre. Yeah. Where it's one's going in this direction, one's pushing in the other, and it's kind of a full sweep. Now as things grow in, could I probably add someone on the back, back wall? Yes. Um, 
But at this point, you can see there's plenty of flow between those two things that I don't have a need to throw extra power heads on there. So it's not dead center because I don't want to just blow tons and tons of flow right at those corals, yeah. but it's enough that it's going to circle water towards the overflow while water from the return is coming f away from the overflow, right. creating like a circular pattern. So you're getting flow from both sides, just one's from the return line, one's from the power head. Yeah. And that's kind of the ideal situation. It is, and like I said, as everything grows, it might find that you know a power head on the other one to give more varied flow coming from that side will be mm -hmm. beneficial. But at this time, tank stays clean, corals are happy, um, I just haven't had a need to throw a second one on I think there. what a lot of people with peninsulas try to do or think that you should be able to do is not have any flow on one side of the tank, which, mm -hmm. I mean, that's challenging. I think, a, I think a lot of people don't want to put that power head on that yeah. end viewing side, which I understand. Peninsula, you want the clean look, but that's how you're going to get the best flow. Yeah. Because you can't push everything in one direction and not having it go back towards the overflow. So I think yeah. having one on the end panel is ideal. And I like the um, MP40 and stuff like that. They're very not obtrusive looking. They're pretty streamlined Yeah. to where it doesn't really take away from the look of the tank. Right. Definitely a challenge, but not impossible. Yeah. Cool. Kevin's asking, what does high flow even mean? How can you tell if you have low, medium, or high flow? It's going to be based upon turnover, roughly. Um, so it's going to be, so say low flow, which is like soft coral tanks, you know, 20 to 30 times turnover. Now, how many times per hour your volume is being turned by power heads. Medium is going to be like in a softy LPS mixed reef kind of deal. You're looking at like 30 to 50 times turnover. And high flow would be an SVS type tank. And you can go 100 times turnover yeah. in those types of tanks, like massive amounts of flow. Um, so it's kind of, it usually breaks into those three categories of the types of corals you have, the general flow rate that you need. Now, everything is going to be so different because when you're, if you have a huge middle mountain structure of rock, you might find that you need more flow to get to all the areas. Mm -hmm. If you've got a very low profile, you know, that kind of stuff. So there's going to be a lot of variables, but that's like your turnover guideline. Right. Some things they want to push so much flow through them. <clears throat> in a high flow situation yeah. that they don't even put sand in it. They use a bare bottom. That's true. If you're going 100, 120 times turnover, you ain't got no sand in there. Yeah. Cause it can, there's physically no way for it to like stay in place. Yeah. So you'll see those bare bottom SBS tanks and that's because they're pushing just so much flow through it. Good question. Yeah, thanks for the question guys. Um, okay, so we talked about the tritus, the kind of slime buildup on corals. Um, another one is gas exchange. And this is extremely important. Your fish take in the oxygen. And then they bring out carbon dioxide whenever they're breathing. Carbon dioxide gets stuck in your water column unless you can have like the proper aeration, mm -hmm. um, which is just like surface agitation. And it's going to exchange out the CO2, bring in more oxygen. Um, and if your CO2 is built up too high, you're going to have your pH and alkalinity drop, which is going to yeah. be unhealthy for the corals. Um, low oxygen levels isn't good for the fish either. So you need that, that carbon dioxide to get out of the system bring in some oxygen in. Um, service aeration, you know, protein skimmers help, just the flow and stuff through something also. Right. Kind right. of kind of mix that all up, bring the carbon dioxide out. That's something I wouldn't think of either that you, that it would be, you know, that's Yeah. Not something that would probably go through someone's head that's new to the hobby. The gas exchange is important. It is. Flow. So a lot of people whenever they have low pH and this is always a common problem, um, you know, where it's too low to be acceptable. And they would come in and that's the thing is like basically, is the surface of your water agitated? You know, your output lines should be rippling the surface. You know, if you've got like closed system, kind of all in one, you definitely need that because the water's not really cascading down. It's not creating much more oxygen exchange. So most of it happens right on the surface of the water and you can um, alleviate your pH and alkalinity drops by doing that. Cool. Yeah, those little things that do matter, but they kind of like, Another thing flow helps with. Yeah. And then. <laughs> we got questions if you want them. I'm waiting for you to. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw them yeah. up. Yeah. Throw them up. Let's do it. Staring at me like, Kevin, I think they want something. <laughs> Kevin's asking, can't fine tune the gate valve. Does it need adjustment daily? It should not. No. Um, it should be kind of a dial it in. Now, if your pump is fluctuating flow regularly, if you have it on any kind of changes, flow from your return pump 
if it's consistent, you should be able to dial it in and it stay there for the most part. Fine, like fine tuning on occasion. Um, a lot of times when people have problem with like the flow, a lot of times is they have the power heads are t like directing too much flow, like in turn gushing at different times into the overflow. Yeah, and that tends to be more of an issue than anything. So we just posted a video not too long ago about how to adjust the gate valve. Yeah, yeah, you know, and where you want it in the overflow box to be as silent yeah. as possible. Yeah, so go check that video out. Very helpful. It'll kind of give you a good guideline on on how to set that. Yeah. How do you know? So, <laughs> can't read. <laughs> how do you know that your flow is enough? You're basically looking at your it, the turnover guideline is a good place to start. Um, kind of get somewhere in that range. And then look at your corals. Are they open and healthy and happy? Is dirt not settling in certain areas of your tank? Does your tank generally stay clean? Um, you know, if you drop stuff in, it's not settling to a certain corner, that right. kind of stuff. So there's like no exact, you need exactly this much flow for this tank. You just kind of have to see the health of everything. Yeah, looking at the way your corals are flowing, are there corals sitting in certain areas that look stagnant, like right. the polyps aren't moving around at all. Or know, if there's one that's so closed in because it's getting beat by yeah, exactly. such direct flow, um, that kind of stuff. And the main thing is that dirt's not settling in your tank. Because that just yeah. equals nutrient problems and algae problems. Yeah, it's a very visual hobby. It's all about yes. you know, what you're, you knowing, just, what you, knowing yeah. your tank and how yeah. it's reacting to everything. Yeah. Cool. Any more no. questions or not? Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> I don't know if we're doing like a Q and A where you want me to go back to back to back, or do you have a list of stuff that you want to get through? I mean, we have all the topics to go through, but we can break it up however. Okay. Yeah, it don't matter. WSF's asking 20Q. What's the best spot to put a powerhead? Um, I, on a side panel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I think in, in a small body like that, it's really worth the investment of doing something like an MP10 or at least a Nero so that you can get a little bit different wave patterns and change in flow. Because it is, it's a very small footprint and if you just have like a singular jet coming from a power head, it's gonna be very hard to find a happy place for corals. Yeah, you need a broad so, flow. Um, smaller tanks, it, you really do want to invest in a good power head yeah. for it. Cool, so I'll move into. Yep, all right. Last thing about like flow importance in your aquarium is your corals, they can't move, they can't go hunt. So if they don't have enough water flow, fl coral food, natural food stuff, the elements and all that, oxygen is not coming to them. Yeah. So if you have very stagnant water, not enough flow, they're not, they're not able to catch food yeah. properly. So um, your growth is going to improve because more stuff is coming to them. The elements that they need, calcium and alkalinity and stuff like that, that gets brought to them by water flow and water passing by them mm -hmm. in exchange. So um, the health of your coral overall, feeding elements and stuff is definitely dependent on flow too. Yeah. So that's four really, really important. You got removing detritus, preventing detritus buildup, promoting gas exchange, and bringing food to your coral. Yeah. Flow is very, very everything important. for corals. It's you know, even, I mean, obviously lighting's number one, but flow, what would you say, probably number two? Yeah, I mean, I think you've got to take like lighting, flow, and water chemistry as like a non-negotiable bundle. Right. You can't not do them right and expect to succeed. Um, you know, you can not have protein skimmers, you can have less than grace, you know, you can not have reactors, but I think these are three things that like, you've got to do right from the beginning for the best long-term health. <clears throat> Not sure what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a question. You got one? G Reef says, what are your thoughts about spin stream by Innovative Marine? Do they have enough flow? I have no idea. I don't know anything about them. Um, that one I believe it just kind of turns with yeah. your output of like, like say your cube. You put it on there and it just turns with the flow, like a random generalizer. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I yeah. think that's what it, I think that one, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it is more randomized than just a straight output, but it's not random. It's still just kind of created in a circle. Yeah. I mean, it's better than just a straight stagnant output, but I think it does not replace a power head. Right. It can help your return pump be a little bit less stagnant flow, mm -hmm. um, but you would still want to put a power head A little head less in there. indirect. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah cause it kind of spins around. I think that's what it was. Chris Nott, I have two MD40s in reef crest mode on a 120. I've been moving towards SPS over the last few years and I'm wondering how much more flow I may need. On a 120, cause I mean that one, I think you go up to 5,000 gallons per hour on each of those, which if running at full blast is running 10,000 gallons per hour. Um, Jeez. So, I mean, you're... Flip your tank over. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting pretty close to like, I don't know, I can't do that much math, but 80 times turnover. Yeah. Somewhere along there with those on full blast. Now, you don't want to be running full blast all the time because you want some variable um, flow. But I would say stick with those. You can increase the gallon percentage per hour on them. Um, you know, play with the different modes to see what works best for kind of keeping everything suspended. And then as you have colonies grow in, which is a long process, but as you get there, you know, you can add more as you find that a big colony of bird's nest is now blocking a good amount of flow to these other corals. You can add as you go from there. But I don't think you have any need to add any more in the beginning of it. Yeah. It's a lot of flow. It's 10,000 gallons per hour. That is a lot. It is a lot. I've, I've seen people, I do not recommend, but there's a, what, a wave mode and you can sync up two power heads to create <laughs> this some well it is it's a wave that rocks back and forth don't do that no I've no i've seen no. people their tanks literally rocking don't put that much pressure not specifically on in a tank. water box but years ago yeah yeah I've people had, thought it was so cool and you're like seeing it get to the edge yeah, until like, your seam blows out water comes out yeah. don't do that yeah you don't need it let's talk about different types of flow all right we've got one question first okay <laughs> more questions if you have if you have a canopy over your tank what effect would is the gas exchange if you have a canopy, it's not going to allow fluid exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide unless you put a fan, two fans technically, one that brings oxygen and fresh air into the canopy and one that exits it out, which was a very common practice back when metal halides yeah. and T5s were a yeah. main source of lighting because almost every tank had a canopy on it in those days because you have these big, clunky metal halide fixtures or, you know, long strips of T5s. Make sure to keep all that And a lot of it heat was in, for you know? heat, <laughs> but also to, like, get fresh air in, you'd have one fan that blows in on yeah. one that takes it out. So it would be the same concept um, that you need that for getting some oxygen into the water. I remember those days having the big old canopy and then having these computer fans that would, you know, not last very well. <laughs> no, because they're water. salt crusted. So you're always replacing them. And it was just, it's like 500, it was like 500 degree halide heat coming out <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. I've been it's burned. It's a great, yeah. I've come a long way with these beautiful LED lights and arms and stuff like that. Yeah. Tanks were not as aesthetically pleasing back in the day. Yeah, not as easy to keep, not no. as aesthetically pleasing, high, high power costs, mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're going to talk about um, different types of flow. So when people talk about flow, it's not all kind of created equal. There's multiple different types. So, you know, choosing them correctly and how they're best used, um, you know, is important as well. So the first one is going to be like a constant flow. This is, doesn't change speed, doesn't change direction. This is usually what we would consider that your return pump, its purpose is. It's constant flow. Um, it doesn't really count towards your turnover. We normally count that as like adding to your flow rate. Its true purpose is to bring nutrients and run them through your filtration and then bring them up to the tank. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing you can do with your constant flow is like we talked about, is have those return nozzles rippling the surface of the water. So they're going to be not necessarily to hit any certain areas of the tank. They're not going to make your corals way back and forth, but it's going to help with the oxygen and gas exchange for the tank. So that's your constant flow. So there you can see the we got the a nice ripple effect on the surface. Yeah. So I always make sure the return nozzles have a big ripple. The power heads don't do much for the surface. Yeah. Um, and that's how I want it to be. So it's just making sure that we're constantly breaking up the water surface on that. Um, second type is going to be we call laminar flow, which is still a similar kind of like one speed, one direction, but internal into the aquarium. And that's what's going to be like a basic power head. This is what used to be always on the market, all that we had before. The old school maxi jet. Maxi jet, Carly, stuff like that. So I wonder this if any of you guys remember <clears throat> the maxi jet. <laughs> I don't know. Depends on how long you've been doing this. I don't even think they this. exist anymore, to be honest. Oh, maybe not. Like um, by the brand. <laughs> them, yeah. No, I think this actually got discontinued like years ago yeah. and then rebranded by something. But um, so this is internal constant flow pretty much. Yeah. And these are power heads that you can physically angle them usually, but they're like you can't change the flow. 
They're only shooting in one direction, constant speed. That's all they do. Creates a lot of dead spots. And it's also really hard to place corals when you have a power head on the side of your glass and it's jetting all of its water in this column. Everything there is going to be like this, yeah. you know, and having a little bit too much flow. So um, these used to be the only choice in the aquarium industry. These controllable power heads were not a thing. Um, having, and you worked the best that you could with them. I'm having flashbacks of the maxi jet because by default they came with suction cups. Yeah, and they never <laughs> so, stayed. Yeah. So you'd stick them to the glass and then you'd come back a few hours later and it's falling off and it's just <laughs> spinning around and blowing sand all over the tank. And you're like, ah! And then you would buy these aftermarket hang-on clips yeah. for them too because they didn't make them. Suction cups don't work long-term yeah. for any pumps, so don't even try it. Um, <laughs> now, these are still available in the market, these type of pumps. They're the most cost-effective. Yeah. So they are budget-friendly, but they got a lot of limitations, so just yeah. kind of keep that in mind. So. And then, there we go, there we go. Robbie says, how often do you change water in a smaller tank? Depends on your care and number of fish, but... Um, a small tank, so say a nano, can still go by like the every two week water change schedule. But if you can do a smaller water change once a week, it's going to help a lot with just keeping values and stuff consistent. Now, if you dose and you aren't like overstocking, you can definitely get away with that every two weeks. If you're trying to not dose, then that weekly water change is going to help keep those parameters a little bit more stable. And if you've got just soft, easy corals. Yeah. You got to base it upon like your nutrient level is really your guideline on when to change your water. Some people are saying they still have the maxi jet. What? They use them for water changes. That was actually a good use. Yeah, for yeah. Just dropping it in and pumping the water out. If you have a maxi jet, you've been in this a while. Yeah. <laughs> You're old school. <laughs> Someone also said they've been rebranded, but <laughs> interesting. Cole's asking, do you guys think brown jelly can be re related to flow issues? I've lost three euphilia and can't find a solution for prevention. Um, brown jelly is usually an infection, and I don't think flow would necessarily have to do with that. Um, problem with brown jelly is it's there, um, and it can definitely spread. Yeah. Now, if you're getting it, you had one, it got brown jelly, died, and then we're talking way later, you got another one, it got brown jelly, died. I would look at um, either it's like supplier you're getting them from if they're the same, um, you know, a fish or something causing damage to it and allowing infection in, that kind of stuff. But I don't think flow would be narrowed down to it, unless, yeah, I don't, I don't think yeah. it would be. Anything's possible, but I don't think so. Okay. All right, one more, and then we'll go back to one of our last points, and then we'll there. Marine 90.3, is it okay for random flow patterns during the day, ranging from 20% to 80%, and then 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., 20% steady flow? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I know in um, the, the Vortex on the app, you can change the hours in which it does. Mm. And some of them do go by like um, moon, moon schedule. Yeah. You can sing them to your light to where at nighttime when the lights are down, the flow drops down as well. So there's really no harm in that, kind of like a rest moon phase almost. Kind of simulates, you know... You know, when some times when the sun goes down, the wind also dies down, yeah. which then maybe the flow under the water slows down a little bit. Yes, I see no problem with that. Yeah. All right, last type of flow, and that we were just talking about, was like vortex and neuros and stuff like that. Um, and that's what we're calling the random flow. So this is your DC power head. Now, there's a little bit more basic ones that don't do wave functions, but they can vary the speed. Then you have ones like the vortex, where you can vary the speed by the hour. You have different cresting modes, flow modes, um, and a very broad uh, wave and like area that it hits with flow. Yeah. Um, these are, of course, the most desired. They're going to be a little more expensive, but they're well worth it because you do have so much random flow that it recreates like on the reef. Yeah. The reef is so high flow, mm -hmm. and it's never the same. The waves are not crashing each other at the same. You know, there isn't a pattern necessarily. Right. So. <clears throat> Having those things that it's just constantly changing, you can sync pumps together so they make certain wave patterns together. Um, you know, this is really your ideal flow, and they're, they're, they can change, which is great because if you get one pump, it can pretty much grow with you for a while because it can go from like 2,000 gallons per hour up to 5,000. Right. And you can change it as you kind of go on that one. 
Yeah, I mean, when you look, when you first see the price on some of these, you're like, whoa, but in the long term, well worth it. Mm -hmm. Make the investment because you're caring for these animals and it's super important that you have the right flow. Yeah, so, all right. That's my speech of the day. A lot of information. Yeah, that's, that's good. A lot of info. Lots of questions I think here. flow is one of those things that a lot of people are always kind of curious about, so I figured we'd yeah. go in a little depth of it. Appreciate you all being here. We are giving away a 25, two $25 gift cards at the end of the show. You got to engage with us like Paul here um, and you get a chance to win. Yep. When will we see freshwater only videos? Paul, we already are doing that. We already have them. Where yeah. have you been? Where have you been, Paul? Uh. <laughs> we have a freshwater dedicated YouTube channel now that we're posting videos every Saturday. Yeah. Saturday morning? Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I believe they're all scheduled. Um, okay. And I don't know if we have a link in here right now for that, but they'll post it in the comments. We'd, so, yeah, we do have a freshwater dedicated channel. You can search Waterbox Aquarius Freshwater on YouTube. Make sure you hop over there and subscribe. Yes, help us out with subscribers. We need to kind of build that number up. Yep. Um, get the freshwater love. Even if you don't have a freshwater tank, just go subscribe and follow along. Maybe it'll inspire you to get one. Yep. Um, so we're building up that library, but that one is just for all your freshwater people. Yep. Good, good stuff. Diva's asking, question for you both. If you could have one water box tank, what would it be? Ooh. Well, I'm a big go, go big or go home kind of person, so I'm taking the 320 yeah. or the 340. Yeah. Whatever the case may be. The Biggest one. 340. Yes. I'm going, I'm going big. Oh. Nope. <laughs> that was going to be my choice. <laughs> But I gotta pick a different one. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give you guys my second choice would probably be the Infinia six foot. It's okay. still big, but also the dimensions are really nice. Super cool cabinetry. So definitely the Infinia six foot. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Good question. I think we've ever asked that one before. <laughs> I think we're questions. Oh! <laughs> Alrighty, we're good on questions. <laughs> We're just like waiting, hello. Show everybody out. If, yeah. if, if you guys haven't already, do us a huge favor and smash that like button. It helps us out tremendously. If you aren't already subscribed, subscribe and hit its best friend, the notification bell right next to oh, it. Oh, it's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's making friends in the comments. They're making friends with the buttons. The buttons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we've got some gift cards to give away. Yes. All right, two $25 gift cards. Ready? Chris Nall and Kevin McKeever on Facebook. Congratulations, you guys. Email winners at waterboxaquariums.com and they will get you hooked up with your gift card, which you can go do whatever you want with. Yep, don't forget we do have a spring sale going on until when? May 31st. May 31st, so I can jump on over. And that's, and that's on specific models while supplies last, so if a model runs out of stock, um, no go. Just, yeah, no go. No go. Um, all right, so we'll be back here next week. And next week, we're actually going to talk about the water box method, which is our maintenance method yep. of keeping tanks healthy and clean. Yep. So we're going to be talking all about what our schedule and everything is here. Yeah, you guys are going to want to tune in for that. Jess is going to give you all the details on how she keeps these tanks sparkling, clean, looking beautiful, colorful corals, etc. So we appreciate you all being here. See you then. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Remember, you can visit us online at waterboxaquariums.com. We're live every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. See you next week.